Hello everyone and welcome to our first video in a video series of, of several videos going through um, the Cognix um, Easy Builder um, software. So and I, I kind of said that wrong. It's the Insight software using Easy Builder in this particular series. Um, I intend to make a, a video series a little later on going through some of the spreadsheet options that um, Insight offers us as well. But for this particular series, we're going to talk about Easy Builder software. Um, there are options that when we create an Easy Builder video or uh, Easy Builder software program, um, we're able to dive into spreadsheet at times for programming options should we need so. Um, however, um, the opposite is not correct. Where if we create the program in spreadsheet, we cannot go into Easy Builder to make modifications. Um, kind of like a, a common theme to think about is that like your Windows operating system is created on top of your your DOS programming which is on, on you could change in your, your command prompt or your command line software so your CMD however the opposite does not really respond well um, so just kind of a, a thought process there is that whatever you do in Insight Easy Builder you can modify in spreadsheet but if you create it in spreadsheet you can't go back to easy builder and modify it so I have installed a couple of versions of of insight um, software on my computer but the one that I prefer to use that I'm going to be using for most of the the training in this video is going to be the the insight um, 5.6.0 software from Cognex um, should you and want to install that you can go to their website and type in basically uh, Insight software or look it up on Google and just it'll automatically take you to kind of their their page and then you'll have to dig through the various versions um, I'm not sure what version they are I do have a newer version which is um, I believe 6.3.0 on my computer um, I'm sure they're probably up to 6.7 or even 7. something by now so it's it's definitely an opportunity that you can install a newer version. Um, the reason why I keep it with a 5.6 is because a lot of the cameras that I have that I work with on a daily basis um, may be using versions as old as 4.3. Um, and so 5.6 still responds pretty well to all of those older versions, but also does allow me the, the functionality of, of still having a newer edition of the e or Insight software. So I've gone ahead and opened it up and I have it right down here and I'm going to go ahead and open this up. So when you go to open um, the Insight software, this is what you'll see as your very first um, screen here. Um, it'll tell you that you're connected to your computer or if you have a camera connected, it'll show you what, what uh, options you can connect to. If this page doesn't come up, sometimes you'll have to go to, I believe, sensor, click on like settings or system. And sometimes you'll have to open up a, a sensor. Usually, network settings will kind of get you there, and you can open up your sensor, or you can open up your your particular computer here. Um, in most cases, for all intents and purposes of this video training, we're gonna keep everything on an emulator. Um, you'll have to create an emulator key. Now, it says right here, I'm already connected to my emulator, but to get an emulator, you will have to go to I gotta remember what tab that's under. Forgive me on that. I, it, I set the emulation key one time and I don't have to set it usually a lot. Um, when you go to the system and go to options tab, you'll find an emulation tab right here and you'll set and you'll click on emulation and then what it'll do is it'll give you a reference key and then you'll have to create an offline programming key now this is not one of those things where you can see my programming key and go copy paste it into your thing and and hope it works because it won't work that way you have a reference key and then an offline programming key that's assigned to you so what you'll have to do in order to get an emulation key Cognex doesn't charge for it you just have to go create a, a a user account on the Cognex website and download a free emulation key and again what you'll do is you'll copy the the reference key up here 
into a generator that they have on their website you'll click generate and then it'll generate the programming key for you and then you'll just copy paste the programming key into this box click apply click OK and then your computer now allows you to run the emulator software as well so the next thing that we're gonna do real quick before the ending of this video is we're gonna have to run some emulation images now to run emulation images for us to work with in the software it kind of depends on the version that you're running as well as how your system is willing to respond to some of that as well as the camera you're connected to you will need to have a set of images to work with and I generally to work with what I I don't have if I don't have a camera to work with on this particular case I will create an image in paint and because I do it in paint I have the option to save it as a bitmap image as a bitmap monochrome as a bitmap color or a JPEG or a few other options as well now this is the first time in this programming and software that I've ran into an issue where it will not let me run a bitmap image as well and I think that has to do with the, the processor on the computer that I'm using as well as some other information on this particular machine that I'm using um, traditionally a bitmap image is the image that I would normally run that I would use in my emulator but in this particular case it's allowing me to use a JPEG so I'm going to use a, a monochrome JPEG which is just a simple black and white image and what I've gone ahead and done is I've set that in my sensor playback so by going to um, image up here in the upper ribbon you'll go to record slash playback options excuse me and in the playbacks tab of this you go to the playback folder and I have it set on my desktop under a folder named cogs and I have 16 JPEG images and then it's going to allow me to understand that those are coming in and by clicking on the PC button I should start to see some of those populate on the ribbon if I left it on the sensor it's physically looking for a sensor and as you can see down here in the network tab I don't have a sensor connected at this time so or a sensor viable that I could connect to so I'm connected to my emulator and I just click PC and it sees the images that I have in the file folder and then I'm able to run those and they'll display up here on this the very last thing that we need to understand um, in this particular emulation software is we have the option to emulate multiple different Cognex inside cameras that are available and by allowing that to happen we would click on emulator and it's going to show our emulator options now I'm gonna go ahead and leave it on the IS2000 120 this is a monochrome camera of the IS2000 series cameras or vision sensors you have the option to several different types of Cognex cameras um, the old school traditional micros all the way into the 7000 series to the 5000 series and then to the newer 2000 series um, I will probably have to upgrade I believe they came out with a 9000 series here in the last year and that would probably be under a newer edition of the software and I would probably have to update this either this firmware on the software or flat out just get a newer edition of the the Cognex Insight um, software for me to use that I'm gonna go ahead and leave it as the Insight 2000 120 um, you're more than welcome to do the same thing to follow along or you could adjust it to the camera that you're physically using and images that you're physically using on maybe an application you're using um, I would suggest you do that if you have those if you don't that's entirely up to you how you need to use the emulation software but for all intents and purposes I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at that and I'm gonna go ahead and leave my images set the way they are and I'm gonna run it that way so um, stay tuned and we'll continue on through the steps of the Cognex software so thank you all for watching